the girl and the graft by o henry the other day i ran across my old friend for his headquarters is the western hemisphere and his line of business is anything from specul now and then when pogue has made a good haul he comes to new york for a rest he says the jug of wine and loaf of bread and thou in the wilderness business is about as much rest and pleasure to him as sliding down the bumps at coney would be to president taft give me says pogue a big city for my vacation especially new york i'm not much fond of new yorkers and manhattan is about the only place on the globe where i don't find any while in the metropolis pogue can always be found at one of two places one is a little second-hand bookshop on fourth avenue where he reads books about his hobbies mahometanism and taxidermy i found him at the other his hall bedroom in eighteenth street where he sat in his stocking feet trying to pluck the banks of the wabash out of a small zither for years he has practiced this tune without arriving near enough to cast the longest trout line to the water's edge on the dresser lay a blued steel colts forty five and a tight roll of tens and twenties large enough around to belong to the spring rattlesnake story class a chambermaid with a room cleaning air fluttered near by in the hall unable to enter or to flee scandalized by the stocking feet aghast at the colts yet powerless with her metropolitan instincts to remove herself beyond the magic influence of the yellow-hued roll i sat on his trunk while ferguson pogue talked no one could be franker or more candid in his conversation beside his expression the cry of henry james for lacteal nourishment at the age of one month would have seemed like a chaldean cryptogram he told me stories of his profession with pride for he considered it an art and i was curious enough to ask him whether he had known any women who followed it ladies said pogue with western chivalry well not to any great extent they don't amount to much in special lines of graft because they're all so busy in general lines what why they have to who's got the money in the world the men did you ever know a man to give a woman a dollar without any consideration a man will shell out his dust to another man free and easy and gratis but if he drops a penny in one of the machines run by the madam eve's daughters amalgamated association and the pineapple chewing gum don't fall out when he pulls the lever you can hear him kick to the superintendent four blocks away man is the hardest proposition a woman has to go up against he's the low-grade one and she has to work overtime to make him pay two times out of five she's salted she can't put in crushers and costly machinery he'd notice em and be on to the game they have to pan out what they get and it hurts their tender hands some of them are natural sluice troughs and can carry out thousand dollars to the ton the dry-eyed ones have to depend on signed letters false hair sympathy the kangaroo walk cowhide whips ability to cook sentimental juries conversational powers silk underskirts ancestry rouge anonymous letters violet sachet powders witnesses revolvers pneumatic forms carbolic acid moonlight cold cream and the evening newspapers you are outrageous ferg i said surely there is none of this graft as you call it in a perfect and harmonious matrimonial union well said pogue nothing that would justify you every time in calling police headquarters and ordering out the reserves and a vaudeville manager on a dead run but it's this way suppose you're a fifth avenue millionaire soaring high on the right side of copper and cappers you come home at night and bring a nine million dollar diamond brooch to the lady who's staked you for a claim you hand it over she says oh george and looks to see if it's backed she comes up and kisses you 
you've waited for it you get it all right it's graft but i'm telling you about artemisia bligh she was from kansas and she suggested corn in all of its phases her hair was as yellow as the silk her form was as tall and graceful as a stalk in the low grounds during a wet summer her eyes were as big and startling as bunions and green was her favorite color on my last trip into the cool recesses of your sequestered city i met a human named vawcross he was worth that is he had a million he told me he was in business on the street a sidewalk merchant says i sarcastic exactly says he senior partner of a paving concern i kind of took to him for this reason i met him on broadway one night when i was out of heart luck tobacco and place he was all silk hat diamonds and front he was all front if you had gone behind him you would have only looked yourself in the face i looked like a cross between count tolstoy and the june lobster i was out of luck i had but let me lay my eyes on that dealer again valcross stopped and talked to me a few minutes and then he took me to a high-toned restaurant to eat dinner there was music and then some beethoven and bordelais sauce and cussing in french and frangipangi and some hauteur and cigarettes when i am flush i know them places i declare i must have looked as bad as a magazine artist sitting there without any money and my hair all rumpled like i was booked to read a chapter from elsie's school days at a brooklyn bohemian smoker but valcross treated me like a bear hunter's guide he wasn't afraid of hurting the waiter's feelings mr pogue he explains to me i am using you go on says i i hope you don't wake up and then he tells me you know the kind of man he was he was a new yorker his whole ambition was to be noticed he wanted to be conspicuous he wanted people to point him out and bow to him and tell others who he was he said it had been the desire of his life always he didn't have but a million so he couldn't attract attention by spending money he said he tried to get into public notice one time by planting a little public square on the east side with garlic for free use of the poor but carnegie heard of it and covered it over at once with a library in the gaelic language three times he had jumped in the way of automobiles but the only result was five broken ribs and a notice in the papers that an unknown man five feet ten with four amalgam filled teeth supposed to be the last of the famous red leary gang had been run over ever try the reporters i asked him last month says mr valcross my expenditure for lunches to reporters was a hundred twenty four dollars and eighty cents get anything out of that i asks that reminds me says he add eight dollars and fifty cents for pepsin yes i got indigestion how am i supposed to push along your scramble for prominence i inquires contrast something of that sort to-night says valcross it grieves me but i'm forced to resort to eccentricity and here he drops his napkin in his soup and rises up and bows to a gent who is devastating a potato under a palm across the room the police commissioner says my climber gratified friend says i in a hurry have ambitions but don't kick a rung out of your ladder when you use me as a stepping stone to salute the police you spoil my appetite on the grounds that i may be degraded and incriminated be thoughtful at the quaker city squab and casserole the idea about artemisia bligh comes to me suppose i can manage to get you in the papers says i a column or two every day in all of em and your picture in most of em for a week how much would it be worth to you ten thousand dollars says valcross warm in a minute but no murder says he and i won't wear pink pants at a cotillion i wouldn't ask you to says i this is honorable stylish and uneffeminate tell the waiter to bring a demitasse and some other beans and i will disclose to you the opus moderandi we closed the deal an hour later in the rococo rouge at noise room 
i telegraphed that night to miss artemisia in selina she took a couple of photographs and an autograph letter to an elder in the fourth presbyterian church in the morning and got some transportation and eighty dollars she stopped in topeka long enough to trade a flashlight interior and a valentine to the vice president of a trust company for a mileage book and a package of five dollar notes with two hundred and fifty dollars scrawled on the band the fifth evening after she got my wire she was waiting all decollete and dressed up for me and volcross to take her to dinner in one of these new york feminine apartment houses where a man can't get in unless he plays bezique and smokes depilatory powder cigarettes she's a stunner says volcross when he saw her they'll give her a two-column cut sure this was the scheme the three of us concocted it was business straight through volcross was to rush miss bligh with all the style and display and emotion he could for a month of course that amounted to nothing as far as his ambitions were concerned the sight of a man in a white tie and patent leather pumps pouring greenbacks through the large end of a cornucopia to purchase nutriment and heart cease for tall willowy blondes in new york is as common a sight as blue turtles in delirium tremens but he was to write her love letters the worst kind of love letters such as your wife publishes after you are dead every day at the end of the month he was to drop her and she would bring suit for one hundred thousand dollars for breach of promise miss artemisia was to get ten thousand dollars if she won the suit that was all and if she lost she was to get it anyhow there was a signed contract to that effect sometimes they had me out with them but not often i couldn't keep up to their style she used to pull out his notes and criticize them like bills of lading say you she'd say what do you call this letter to a hardware merchant from his nephew on learning that his aunt has nettle rash you eastern duffers know as much about writing love letters as a kansas grasshopper does about tugboats my dear miss bly wouldn't that put pink icing and a little red sugar bird on your bridal cake how long do you expect to hold an audience in a courtroom with that kind of stuff you want to get down to business and call me tweedledum's babe and honeysuckle and sign yourself mamma's own big bad puggy wuggy boy if you want any limelight to concentrate upon your sparse gray hairs get sappy after that volcross dipped his pen in the indelible tabasco his notes read like something or other in the original i could see a jury sitting up and women tearing one another's hats to hear him read and i could see piling up for mr volcross as much notoriousness as archbishop cranmer or the brooklyn bridge or cheese on salad ever enjoyed he seemed mighty pleased at the prospects they agreed on a night and i stood on fifth avenue outside a solemn restaurant and watched him a process server walked in and handed volcross the papers at his table everybody looked at him and he looked as proud as cicero i went back to my room and lit a five-cent cigar for i knew the ten thousand dollars was as good as ours about two hours later somebody knocked at my door there stood volcross and miss artemisia and she was clinging yes sir clinging to his arm and they tells me they'd been out and got married and they articulated some trivial cadences about love and such and they laid down a bundle on the table and said good night and left and that's why i say concluded ferguson pogue that a woman is too busy occupied with her natural vocation and instinct of graft such as given her for self-preservation and amusement to make any great success in special lines what was in the bundle that they left i asked with my usual curiosity why said ferguson there was a scalper's railroad ticket as far as kansas city and two pairs of mr volcross's old pants If you like the video, put a like, subscribe to the channel, and click on the bell to not miss our new videos.